A Good Health R Report special report tonight. It's a life-threatening problem facing a growing number of patients. People risking their lives, as you heard, by rationing their insulin because they can't afford to pay for the amount they truly need. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge here with a closer look at a, what's really a disturbing trend here, Doc. Sandra and Jason, this is a critical topic. In fact, a recent study found nearly 18% of working-age adults with diabetes are rationing their medication because of concerns about costs, and I see it in the ER all the time. That means people are taking smaller doses or skipping doses altogether. This is a dangerous practice that highlights a very urgent problem. I don't have this insulin. I die. There's no questions. I just, I will die without my insulin. Jillian Ripolone so of Birmingham was eight years old when she was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. This summer, she made a trip to Canada to buy insulin with Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders by her side. This is our life support. Seven and a half million Americans depend on this every single day to stay alive. The retail price for a vial of Jillian's insulin in the U.S. is about $350. When we go to Canada, the same vial made by the same manufacturer is $25 a vial. Jillian has insurance, but it doesn't cover all of her costs. She's fighting for people who can't make ends meet. People are dying because they're rationing their insulin because they can't afford it. According to the Healthcare Cost Institute, prices of insulin doubled between 2012 and 2017. So why is it often a tenth of the price in Canada? Well, unlike the United States, the Canadian government heavily regulates the cost of medications and it negotiates prices with the drug manufacturers. We're angry and we want, we demand answers and we're demanding change. It's a treatment and it's an absolutely necessary one. You cannot just not have it. You will die without insulin if you are a diabetic. Ryan Dinkgrave of Royal Oak is a board member for JDRF, the organization that funds critical research into type 1 diabetes. I was diagnosed when I was 10 years old. I was in the fifth grade. Do you swear that the Ryan testified before a congressional hearing at age 16 about the need for more research funding. And living with diabetes is still, at best, very difficult. Until there is a cure, nothing will satisfy those who struggle to live daily with this disease. 20 years later, he's encouraged by the progress being made in research and diabetes technology, but says it's unfathomable that some Americans are unable to afford the insulin they need. The fact that, you know, somebody would die, people have died, are dying without it, is un-American. He encourages everyone to voice their support for research and affordable insulin to their lawmakers, a sentiment Jillian shares. And it's just something that we have to work on as a nation. And the only way we're going to kind of get to that point is by using our patient voices. Now, look, if you're having trouble affording your insulin, you need to talk to your doctor and ask for help. Rationing, rationing your insulin, it is incredibly dangerous and it is not a long-term solution to this problem. Now, one way that you can support families with type 1 diabetes is the annual JDRF One Walk. That's coming up this Sunday. It's at Millican State Park in Detroit. JDRF is striving to raise more than a million dollars to help fund critical research into type 1 diabetes and help families navigate the many challenges of the disease. And you can find all of the details at the health page on clickondetroit.com. It's it's, yeah, it's really disheartening. This ends up becoming political and slows way down and nothing gets done about this. And it's such a travesty, yeah. like you said, over and over. It's a case of life and death for a lot of yeah. folks. Exactly. Or not and insulin is not a new drug. We should have a solution to this. Yeah.